Yeah, we'd like to uh, welcome my regular guest, uh, Dave Nixon, who was the ex-chairman of Barrow Raiders, and he's also the chairman of Barrow Angling Association. Uh, how are you doing, Dave? What's the last week been like? Uh, very wet, Tony. Very wet. Bit boring. Locked in. Not doing anything. Tying a few flies. Ready for the weather improving. Yeah, well, last week, Dave, we were having a discussion about uh, the ban on fishing, but uh, the day after, um, I was reading my paper and a little article popped up and it said, no, no, you can now go fishing because it's deemed as an exercise. So uh, how, how did that impact upon yourself? Well, I had to go around all the Barrow Waters, um, Porkerbeck, Pennington, Harlow, Canileth, and take down all the all the stop fishing notices that I'd put up the day before. So it got me out of the house, um, took them all down, and a uh, bit of fresh air. So why do you think the government said that you couldn't go fishing in the first place and then sort of suddenly change its mind? I mean, Well, I think this government um, has a track record of U-turns um, and representations were made to the government by the um, uh, Angling Trust, which is the, mm -hmm. so to speak, the governing body of, um, of angling, speaks for all the disciplines, coarse fishing, sea fishing, game fishing. Um, and I think they made the, the argument that it contributes greatly to people's mental health. Uh, that they can get out and do something. There is natural social distancing in fishing. The only issue there is, um, and the clubs are controlling this, is in the car parking. Is people standing too close together um, as they're tackling up in the car park. So I think the government changed its mind. As long as you stay local... So there's no travelling down to the Midlands or up to Scotland or over to Ireland or anything like that. So as long as uh, the members of the of the clubs stay with their own clubs, then there isn't a problem. So how does the community of Furness know now that you can actually go fishing? Has there been a well? Notice? All the clubs that I'm aware of have sent out uh, emails to their members, and they've put they've all. Um, put the notification and information on their websites and also if people who are listening to this uh, go to the Angling Trust website, they'll see the notification and, the, and what the situation is. Okay, well, thanks for that. Now, Dave, uh, Rugby League, obviously, close to our hearts. Um, I've just seen some news and it hasn't yet been uh, confirmed 100%, but there is a, a strong rumour going around that uh, the Rugby League Championship, which is the league above Barrows, is going to be delayed by three weeks with a reduced number of fixtures. And League One, which is now more uh, pertaining to Barrow Raiders, is not going to start till May. Uh, have you heard anything similar? Well, I know that I, I, I have heard, I thought it was April. I, I'd heard April that Barrow weren't going to start uh, until April. But um, I'm not surprised because Rugby Union has suspended all elite games for two weeks because of the rising tide of COVID um, infections within the game. So I'm not surprised at all that the Rugby League there was a meeting yesterday uh, of all clubs uh, via Zoom, I believe, that Steve Neal uh, was at. Um, I've not heard anything this morning, but I'm not surprised. Yeah, because obviously in terms of, uh, in terms of Barrow <laughs> and, and every other club uh, in League One, uh, this is about balancing the furlough act, really, isn't it? I mean, when do you start training? When do you bring people off furlough? Do you know if that's had any impact on those plans? Well, I, I don't know, really. Uh, the Barrow employees, of which the players are some, are still furloughed. Um, I can't see 
that there being any difference in that until we get a firm notification of when people can start training. Um, I bet Cresta will be disappointed because he was hoping to get them in in the very near future uh, for pre-season, but obviously that's not going to happen uh, at the moment. I think the number, I mean, there's been 300 and odd deaths in Barrow uh, from COVID. It's in mm-hmm. the evening mail today. I think it's about 330, something like that, but certainly yeah. over 300. So, until the infection rate and the death rate starts dropping nationally, I don't think there's much chance of uh, getting into pre-season or even starting. I mean, if it continues the way it is, and there's this new strain from Brazil and whatnot that people are quite frightened of, uh, according to the papers, I wouldn't be that surprised if the whole season wasn't cancelled. Oh, dear. Well, look, They've got to get the vaccination uh, out, haven't they, as you say? Yeah, well, they're rolling that out. A little bit of concern about the delay in the second uh, inoculation, but we'll have to see how that goes. Now, the other thing that, that's also been suggested is that because of the delay, um, Barrow would not be competing in the Challenge Cup which is a bit of a disappointment. And also the 1895 Cup, the sort of competition brought in for clubs underneath Super League, um, only the top four teams that get through to the Challenge Cup sort of sixth round would be invited to compete in that. So Barrow wouldn't get any revenue from that competition either. No, I can understand the RFL's thinking about that, but um, it's a disappointment. Yes, Stephen the board will be disappointed in not um, not being able to to take part in those competitions. But I think the RFL are looking at best-case scenario and running a skeleton competition, so to speak. So at least there are some games, but not an excess. I mean, the other thing we need to, they need to be looking at, and maybe Steve will, uh, when he puts a press release out, you know, are there going to be scrums? There was... There was a decision taken that they were going to reintroduce scrums oh, right. because it re- it reduced the amount of contact and therefore the uh, amount of con- concussion protocols that would have to be put in place. But with the rising infections, you know, we need to know, are we going to continue with just play the balls? Now, some sad news uh, in, in recent days, Dave, was... Uh was uh, the fact that uh, Ray Wallace has passed away. Ray, um, I didn't know him well, but uh, but I did know him to say hello to and have a few chats with over the seasons. But he he was down Craven Park for many years, Dave. I know he, you knew him uh, better than I did. Uh, so just what were your thoughts on, on Ray there? Well, I hadn't seen him, obviously, um, during COVID. Um but I used to obviously. Uh, I mean, I used to see him at every home game after I was chairman. When I was chairman, he was at every game. Great bloke, Ray. Um, did a hell of a lot for the club over and beyond uh, being the commitment uh, kit man. Mm. Very, very professional in uh, in his job. I mean, the kit was always it was pristine. Mm. It was hung up. Everybody's was on their peg where they sat. Uh, all the players liked Wally. He, he could be a little bit um, sharp with them if they didn't behave themselves uh, mm. in relation to his kit, if they flung it around mm. the room or anything. <laughs> but uh, all the players liked him. Everybody liked him. A good player in his own um, mm. a, 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 in his own career. He played uh, as a prop for... Uh, what was Vickers in those days, Vickers Rugby Union, and he played up to county standard. Um, good player, nice blow, good crack with him. The last few times I saw him, he wasn't too well. Nothing to do, I mean, I don't know whether it's COVID or whatever um, mm, no. has killed him, but his last couple of years, he, he was a little infirm, but he was always at the game, always sitting in the dugout, and when I was going for my pie and cup of tea at half time, um, I'd always have a crack with him and it was always nice to see him. So 
he, he will be sorely missed down the club. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, our thoughts uh, are with his family and friends. Now, another guy who uh, used to be at uh, Craven Park, Dave, uh, he was a coach when you were there as uh, chairman and on the board was uh, Steve McCormack, who this week has also been given a, a lot of plaudits for his work in uh, elite athlete well-being which uh, is a qualification he's just taken. He's got to level four, which makes him uh, one of the most qualified people in, in the world, apparently, um, in this particular field. So you knew Steve McCormack very well, Dave. Uh, how do you feel about him being sort of plauded for his work in helping with mental health and that with uh, rugby league players? Well, I think he's to be commended. Um, nice, again, Smashing bloke, Steve. Um, obviously coached Scotland as well for quite a few years. Yeah. Um, when he left Barrow, he went to be a teacher. He was mm. whilst he was at Barrow, he was um, also training to be a teacher part time. And when he gained his um, his teaching qualification, he went to be a full-time teacher because it was a bit more security. But he was then offered a job by Wigan. I think he was doing yep. some coaching in the academy. But he then moved into the area in which he's been qualified in, in now and was doing was the well, player welfare management manager at Wigan Rugby League. And he's obviously kicked on from there. I mean, I think he's ideally situated uh, ideally suited to that role. Very caring bloke. I can say that, you know, as far as uh, my son James, who played for Barrow, always had a very high opinion of him. All the players liked him. And when James broke his arm um, at uh, Lee that night, I don't know, were you there then, Tony? Were no. you at that game? No. Well, he got taken to Wigan... Um, uh, infirmary and one of the first people to visit him the next morning was Steve McCormack hmm. um, who came along and you know more or less said if there's anything I can do and he visited he, James was in Wigan for well, nearly a week I think um, getting his arm fixed and, and all of that and uh, Steve McCormack visited him every day you know, which he didn't have to but he was there visiting him every day so I'm really pleased for him. I mean, he's, he's rugby league through and through. And um, I'm not saying teaching didn't suit him because I would imagine he'd be very good as a teacher, but his heart lay in rugby league. And I think once he could get a job there that wasn't sackable, shall we say, on results, he's mm -hmm. moved back into it. And uh, good luck to him. I haven't seen him for a couple of years, I might say, but always nice to run into. No, yeah, as I say, we got to know him a few years ago, didn't we, when uh, it, it was his success at Whitehaven that brought him to Rugby League's attention, really, because yeah. ju just winding our memories back a little bit, Dave, um, Whitehaven were on fire, weren't they? They were top of the championship. They nearly got in Super League, and uh, Steve McCormack's record at Whitehaven was second to none, wasn't it? Yeah, they just failed in the, in the, in the playoff, didn't they, in the final? Castleford, um, it? just couldn't get over that um, mm -hmm. that hump, so to speak. And then he went to Witness, didn't he? Didn't he go? Yeah, they went to Witness and they went bust, didn't they? Yeah, we because we were, we tried to recruit him, didn't we? Yeah, um, and and he went to Witness, and then then he came to Barrow. Um, yeah. I didn't think he did a bad bad job at Barrow. Um, certainly, no one rest in the changing room. Maybe a little bit too forward orientated for the Barrow uh, supporters who like to see flowing rugby, but he didn't do a bad job and no, um, no criticism of him. Nice, very nice flow. Now, I know you don't follow football, Dave, um, but uh, there's, there's always a lot of uh, good banter, let's say, between the Liverpool and Manchester United fraternity, particularly in Barrow. And uh, Man United beat Burnley the other night, went top of the league. Uh, were you aware of that? Yeah, I did see it. It does register. I don't follow it. Um, I tend to follow Liverpool's results because there's a good friend uh, lives up the road from me who's... Uh, 
uh, my personal handyman, because I'm useless, um, <laughs> and he's a dyed-in-the-wool scouser. So I usually ring him up and shout, come on the toffees, or, uh, which is the Everton, which is Everton. Yes. And um, ask him how he's feeling when they've lost <laughs> uh, or when Manchester United go past them. So uh, I'm waiting for him to come and bleed some radiators for me. And uh, whilst he's involved in that, I might mention the Manchester United going top. And the other thing that you mentioned to me the other day, Dave, when we got in touch, was that you actually watched a football game. Crawley Town played Leeds United in the FA Cup, and it was on TV at the weekend. And you, you said you were very, very impressed by Crawley's performance. Yeah, well, I, I, uh, I think I pushed the wrong button. And then I saw Crawley, and then I thought, they, are they in Barrow's League? Yes. So just because I've never... It's years since I've been to watch Barrow. I thought I'll I'll just watch this and, and see what the standards like. And and I was, as I said, I was very impressed with the standard or the way that Crawley played, considering they were playing a Premier League team. Yes. Um, and it was quite quite entertaining. I thought the way Crawley played. I, I didn't normally. I, I watch if I watch Manchester United or Liverpool or whatever. I get a bit agitated because as soon as anybody goes near them, they fall over and look like they've been shot by a two-two rifle, you know. Um, uh, but Crawley just got on with it, and I did enjoy it. Um, I liked the way they played, and uh, it made me think that maybe you could take me to a Barrow game sometime. Wow. Well, it, well, we all want to go and watch Barrow in the Football League, Dave, don't we? But as you said... Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I even thought beginning of the season, I might go and watch it, pick a game, you know, yeah. where there's a team that I know, that I've heard of, um, and, and go and watch them, give them a bit of support. Yeah. Well, I think you've heard of Bolton Wonders, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can remember... Who was, who was it who played for Bolton? Um no, I can't remember now. I was thinking of Bert Troutman, but he played for Manchester City. Um, right. Matt, I have seen, Matt Lofthouse, was it? It could have been, yeah. I've seen Stanley Matthews. I saw Bert Troutman. I watched uh, Tom Finney a lot because there was an old chap across the back when we lived in Preston when I was about five or six. Mm. He used to take me down to Deepdale and mm. uh, I used to sit over the railings behind the goal. Uh, on the town end and I was at Tom Finney's last game um, far better player than Stanley Matthews <laughs> Right Dave well unfortunately we have to keep uh, having these chats on Zoom we're not able to go in the studio everything's really on strict lockdown isn't it but uh, as I keep saying to all the listeners look we uh, we keep plodding on we try and stay positive and we invite all people out there in sporting associations in the furnace area to get in touch with can do fm and uh, let's get them on the show in the future yeah yeah it'd be great to, have, to be down in the studio and and talking to people face to face yeah all right then mate well look uh, i'll be in touch next week look after yourself and stay safe dave thanks very much yeah. for coming on and you tony and all the listeners stay safe obey the regulations and we'll speak to you next week thank you